So today I'm going to be talking about how to properly insert in a nasogastric tube. And I'm also going to talk about the importance of enteral and parenteral, I can't say that word, nutrition. Um, also some complications of both. So to get started, I'm going to have my lovely assistant here. I'm going to um, just demonstrate how to insert an NG tube. So first of all, before you even insert it, I'd gather my supplies, but all I have is this handy dandy shoestring. <laughs> so you would get your nasogastric tube, um, a flush, and so you could check your aspirate. Um, and then you'd also have some lube or the stuff that you put on the end. And so then to get started, I would measure. Can you turn sideways for me, please? Thank you very much. You measure from tip of the nose to the pinna and also down to the xiphoid process here. And you can turn back around the front. And to do that, I would probably just mark it so you can get an accurate depiction of where your nasogastric tube is and if it's displaced any or um, if you haven't gone in far enough. So then after that, I would lube up the end and I would have my lovely patient here lean her head back and I would place it in her nose and then once it gets down to her um, throat area, she'd kind of cough and I'd push her head forward. You don't want to do a lot of pressure, but they are going to want to kind of jerk back. So you got to push it down and you're going to tell them to swallow like on a on water or something to advance it down. You're just going to advance, advance, advance. And then once you get to that mark, you are going to um, secure it as much as you can. And then you're going to get aspirate and check for a pH, preferably less than five, because that indicates that you're in the right place. And then you would get an x-ray placement to really confirm it, because that's the best way. So if you'd like to sit down. Okay. Now I'm gonna take a seat. So I'm going to just explain um, like the description of the procedure, some indications, outcomes, evaluations, and things like that about it in G tube insertion. So a nasogastric tube is just the flexible tube, my lovely shoestring, that will be inserted through the nostril, down the esophagus, and into the stomach. Placement will be confirmed by the X-ray post-procedure, as I said. Um, a few indications for an NG tube is for like compression or decompression um, if you need to remove the stomach contents or if you need to prevent any type of hemorrhage then also another one is lavage which is like the washing of a stomach but what we're really going to focus on today is like the um, nutritional and medication aspects of a nasogastric tube um, so outcomes and evaluation of that you really want to relieve the distension or the nausea or vomiting um, make sure proper nutrition is provided and then you know if you want to lavage make sure everything's um, properly washed out and then for evaluation you want to make sure that the patient tolerates the procedure well and that the tube is patent and properly functioning so some potential complications of just an ng tube in general or the insertion of an ng tube um, you can possibly get eso esophageal perforation and a pneumothorax thorax during procedure but post-procedure, you really want to make sure that you are um, maintaining the patent patency of the tube because you can get an occlusion or you can even potentially have dislodgement if the patient uh, wants to vomit or coughs too much. Some nursing considerations and nursing interventions for this is before, obviously, you need to ensure the reason why this is being placed by the healthcare provider. And then you need to have your two patient identifiers explain any Concerns, questions, really hone in on the importance of during the procedure and what they need to do to help you to insert the uh, tube properly. Uh, then during the procedure, like I said, you need to perform an abdominal assessment first, always do that. Um, and then get the aspirate, check the pH content, um, and then confirm placement with x-ray. Um, oh, also you need to check uh, the nose for any like nasal nasal deviation symptom deviation um, or polyps or anything like that um, after the procedure you need to like I said again sorry maintain a uh, two patency oral hygiene is a very big one because they are not ingesting anything through their mouth so you need to make sure it'll be really dry um, and an abdominal assessment to make sure that it's still you know running and functioning 
some client education um, explaining the procedure and what may come after that because sometimes the NG tube isn't always long lasting like it can be in for up to four weeks is ideal. Uh, talk the client through the procedure like as far as tilting your head back and swallowing and doing all that to ensure that you have a swift procedure. Um, also another thing that I wanted to, to make sure is establish a signal during the procedure if something is like distressing or something like to raise your like hand or your finger or something um, just so you know hey something's not right something doesn't feel good. Some interventions that you can do are report unusual color drainage, um, oral care often, uh, flush the NG tube with like 10 to 30 mils of water um, before and between uh, medication administration and after um, or feedings or anything like that. You want to make sure you flush it every four hours anyway, but it's really important to flush before medication, after medication, and if you have multiple medications, you need to flush in between each medication. Um, you need to ensure that the suctioning equipment is functioning properly if you have to use that. Um, and then if suction is needed, you only suction intermittently on withdrawal and never on insertion. So that's it for the nasogastric tube. I'm going to move um, to nursing management for enteral nutrition complications. The first one I'm going to talk about is aspiration. So I think the most important is to elevate the head of the bed 30 to 45 degrees. And then after feeding, because enteral is um, like through any type of tube, like a nasogastric tube, a peg tube, uh, anything like that. So you definitely need to elevate the head of the bed 30 to 45 degrees, and then wait 30 to 60 minutes after the feeding to ensure that it is properly being digested. Um, after that, you need to always make sure that you check tube positioning and if vomiting occurs, you need to withhold uh, the feeding. Uh, another complication is diarrhea. Um, you never want to dilute the formula with water. That comes premixed by pharmacy and so they know what needs to be in it. You don't need to dilute it in any way. Um, always watch for contamination. Throw out your bags after 24 hours. Make sure that the tubing has been changed whenever it needs to per uh, hospital protocol. And then if diarrhea does occur, then slow down the formula because that could also be an issue. Um, maintenance of tube pat patency, like I've said, irrigate the water before, after, in between, whatever, just irrigate your tube because that's always the best. And uh, 30 to 60 milliliters, kind of depending on where your tube is placed. Um, also, uh, continuous feedings need to be administered on a feeding pump with an occlusion alarm. That way you know if like something's blocked, it'll alert you like, hey, okay, something's, something's going on. Uh, the maintenance of tooth placement. The two best things to do is check the tube positioning often by the marker placed upon the insertion. So like I said earlier, if the marker is dislodged at all or if you don't see the marker, it may have moved down. So you definitely need to either check the aspirate or get another x-ray because that's the best way to see um, how the tube is placed. And then check residuals every four to six hours. Um, that's the one of the good things to do. Uh, administration of medication, I've said this a lot, irrigate the water before and after administration. Um, more than one medication is given, flush it between. Crushing the medications and giving it with normal saline if possible, but you never crush enteric coated medications or uh, long acting. Sorry medication. about that, I had to let my dog out. Anyway, I'm going to finish on parenteral nutrition and how to prevent other complications for that. So first of all, for infection, you must have a filter. Parenteral is anything to do with like, your veins, like you're giving uh, nutrition through your veins. So a central line, a pig line, peripheral lines aren't preferred, but if you have to, you have to. Um, but anyway, you have to have a filter. So also with lipids, you have to change the bag tubing and filter every 24 hours. And if you're giving amino, amino acids and dextrose, you have to change the bag and filter every 24 hours and the tubing every 72 hours. Um, you're also going to use a sterile, sterile procedure when changing central line dressings. So like if you have a pick line or um, a central line, you have to make sure that you change that sterilely. So like gloves, mask, whole shebang. Uh, then you're going to monitor for signs and symptoms of infection and monitor vital signs every 
four to eight hours for, you know, spike in temperature, anything like that. Um, next, to monitor hyperglycemia, you need to check the daily labs prior to new uh, bag administration, and then check the blood glucose every four to six hours. Um, really, for parenteral, you want to make sure that the blood glucose is maintained between 140 and 180. That's a little more elevated than normal, but you are giving them a lot of sugary stuff in their food, or in their nutrition. Um, then also monitor for signs and symptoms. For hypoglycemia, the best thing to do, I mean, monitor for signs and symptoms, check your blood glucose, but important is to keep 10% dextrose in water at bedside in case the feeding solution runs out and pharmacy hasn't set up, sent up the new bag. You just want to make sure that you'll have that at all times to prevent them to go the other way and get hypoglycemic. For patient safety, you want to make sure that fat emulsions are infused separately and delivered at 12 hours. Um, you also always want to compare the MAR and what you have on hand. That is another long rule. Um, and it's, it never hurts to have a second RN to come in and confirm, like, hey, okay, yes, that is right, that is correct, you're good to go. Um, also, look over the tubing from bag. Uh, check the solution for any leaks or color changes. That's also a good thing to do for, like, clarity and fat emulsions if they were to break off. Uh, discontinue and replace the bag even if it is not completely finished after 24 hours. That just prevents infection and other things like that. Um, lastly, I'm going to talk about maintaining pee and solution. So you always want to follow aseptic technique um, to reduce infection. Uh, you want to always use a filter because it just helps, you know, filter out all the stuff and make sure that no fat emulsions are like gonna get clumped up and sent into the line because that would not be good. That would just cause occlusion of your uh, vein or artery. Um, then you wanna label and date and time. Uh, also the multi-lumen, so like uh, central lines, they can have two or three different like individual lines. Um, you always wanna label one for blood, for uh, the, and the nutrition because you never wanna get the two mixed up and you never wanna pull blood or uh, get a blood draw from the nutritional line. Um, obviously you need to set an alarm for obstruction and you also need to check infusion settings periodically to maintain correct infusion. Just that way you know everything's running smoothly and so yeah that's all I have.